Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome if you're new. So today we're going to go over the most important tips for improving your aim in Cold War. And if you guys do enjoy the content, make sure to leave a like. If you guys did learn something, I'd really appreciate it. We can get a like goal of 500 likes. That would be absolutely amazing. And make sure to subscribe if you're brand new around here. Join Turbo Nation today, make it official, and let's get on with the video. All right, so the first thing that I do want to talk about is finding your best sensitivity. So sensitivity is the most important factor when it comes to having much better aim in Cold War. So there are players out there who play from a range of four sensitivity all the way up to max sensitivity all it really comes down to is just experience and just learning how to control that aim and just getting used to it over time now for most pro players just for reference most of them play between a four and a seven sensitivity so this is just perfect for them because it allows them to be as accurate as possible when you're moving your sticks while you're trying to engage in a gunfight the higher sensitivity you have the more prone you are to over aiming and then you could miss your shots so that's why pros usually go with lower sensitivities that way they have a lot more confidence when they do engage in gunfights they have a much more precise shot me for example i'm running on a six horizontal and a six vertical sensitivity this is what works for me and this is something that i've gotten used to and i find a lot of success with it so just because i'm running this exact same sensitivity doesn't mean that you should go ahead and copy it you just kind of have to figure out what works best for you for my ads stick sensitivity this is my low zoom i have it at a 0.9 typically i would advise just putting it down to a 0.8 or a 0.7 but it all just comes down to personal preference and what you are comfortable with again same thing applies to the stick sensitivity for high zoom this is mostly applied to snipers and i'm not personally a sniper guy myself so i don't really touch this at all so just a quick recap on sensitivity basically the lower your sensitivity is the much more accurate your shot is going to be especially at longer ranges and the higher your sensitivity is the more prone you are likely to miss your shots but like i said it's different for everybody you just have to get used to it there are definitely pros and cons of running a low sensitivity versus a high sensitivity low sensitivity you get the accuracy right but it is going to be difficult for you to turn on opponents. Let's say somebody appears out of nowhere and your sensitivity is so low that it's just too late to engage in that gunfight. Whereas if you had a higher sensitivity, you would have that you would have that advantage of being able to turn around quickly and engaging with your opponents. All right. Now, as far as aim response curve type, I generally stay with the standard. I've messed around with different settings here. And personally, I do like standard. Some people, they do like dynamic. Some people like linear. It all just comes down to personal preference. You just kind of have to try and test it out yourself. See what you're comfortable with. Now, as far as target aim assist mode i again go with standard i have messed around with different aim assist modes here and i find that standard seems to be the best for me so again same thing applies just go into a private match try out different aim assist modes and play against some bots and see how you feel about that all right so the next thing i do want to talk about is recoil patterns and how to understand them this is especially important because every single weapon in this game has a unique recoil pattern that is special to that particular weapon so for example i'm using the xm4 right now i'm standing about 15 meters away or 14 meters from this wall what i'm going to do is i'm going to line up my crosshairs right with this little wall right here in this line and i'm going to aim down sights and i'm just going to fire my weapon and we should see a recoil pattern all right, so taking a look at that recoil pattern, as you can see, it is straight up vertical and then it cuts to the corner over to the right. This is definitely important to understand because this will help us figure out how to control this recoil when the time comes for it. Again, I'm gonna do the same exact thing and we should see the same exact recoil pattern. So I'm gonna line up my crosshairs accordingly, aim down sights, and I'm gonna fire my weapon. So as you can see, it is literally the same exact recoil pattern, and you can find this true for almost every single weapon in the game. They're going to have their own unique recoil pattern. All right, so next up, I want to talk about attachments and how they can dramatically help reduce the recoil on pretty much every single weapon. So the main attachments that you do want to focus on when you're trying to help with your recoil control is going to be your muzzle as well as your under barrel. Now for the XM4, we know specifically that it has mostly vertical recoil. It just goes straight up the first maybe 15, 20 bullets or so. If you take a look here the muzzle break gives us four percent flash guard does not give us any recoil control suppressor doesn't help with that as well infantry compensator socom eliminator and agency all three of these do help with vertical recoil control in some way shape or form now there are some attachments here that help more than others for example the socom eliminator is going to give us our best bet at controlling that vertical recoil control so we're just going to go ahead and put this on for example purposes and then we're going to put on an under barrel that helps out as well so typically under barrels they only usually help mostly 
basically with horizontal recoil control. I guess that's Treyarch's way of balancing the game. But there is one attachment here that does help slightly with vertical recoil control. That's going to be the field agent grip. So obviously this is going to be the clear choice if we want to have max recoil control as much as possible. So we're going to go ahead and slap that on. All right. So now that we have our SOCOM eliminator as well as our field agent grip, we're going to try the same exact thing. We're just going to aim at this wall. Crosshairs are lined up and let's see how the recoil pattern looks after that. So I'm not doing anything at all. I'm not trying to control the recoil. And as you can see, that's a pretty dramatic difference right off the bat. So you can imagine how putting on the correct attachments is going to help you get quote unquote, no recoil whatsoever. So this is a huge, huge difference in change in that recoil pattern right there. So this next tip that I'm going to talk about is a two part tip. So the first part of this tip is one method to control recoil, especially at longer distances. This method is called burst firing. So burst firing is basically when you're firing your weapon and then you let off of your trigger. The, remember, I showed you guys the recoil pattern how it goes straight up and then it cuts to the corner over to the right with resetting this recoil pattern that is essentially what we want to do when we're burst firing so this is especially going to be helpful at longer ranges and getting a much more accurate shot so let me show you guys here just an example so again our crosshairs are lined up where they're supposed to be let's aim down sights and let's go ahead and burst fire So obviously I'm being a little dramatic with my pauses between fires because you know, this is just for example purposes, but as you can see here, it's a much better result as far as accuracy goes versus when I was just pulling down on the trigger. And then you saw that the recoil pattern definitely looked a little bit more vertical. So let's say there's an opponent that's about maybe 50, 40 meters away. So I'm going to aim down sights and I'm going to burst fire my weapon. So I'm rapidly taking my finger off of my trigger button really quickly in between bursts. It just didn't seem like it at the time, but best believe this is going to be very beneficial and very helpful for taking down opponents at longer ranges with a lot more accuracy. All right, so method number two to controlling your recoil. This is literally just counteracting that recoil pattern. So we know the recoil pattern of the XM4, it goes straight up and then it cuts to the corner to the right. Now, knowing that information, what I'm gonna do is when I fire my weapon i am going to counteract that recoil by tugging down on my right stick but not too hard you know you want to do it slightly you don't want to do it too hard because if you do that it's going to mess up your accuracy so here we go all right, so as you can see here, I was able to control the recoil. Of course, it's not perfect, but this is something that you do want to practice and utilize every single day. Practice makes perfect. That's the main key here. If you don't practice, then your recoil is just not going to improve. So remember, just try to figure out every single weapon's recoil patterns and then use that information to help yourself counteract that recoil. So just go into a private match as I'm doing here, study the recoil patterns and counteract that recoil physically with your controller. All right, so the next thing I do want to talk about is centering so centering is basically what you see here in the middle of my screen it's that small little tiny dot in between my crosshairs the most important thing about centering is that you want to keep it literally at the center of your screen pretty much everywhere you go in the map most players you will see that they have it slightly down here and of course that is wrong you know i'm definitely guilty of doing this sometimes but you know i have so much experience in call of duty that when it comes to an engagement in a gunfight it doesn't really hurt me at all but when you're beginning it's really great to know these fundamentals just keep your crosshairs in the middle of the screen as much as you possibly can and now that you've got the placement down what you want to do is that you want to predict where enemies are going to be for example let's say that an enemy pops up right here at this window but you haven't even turned around the corner yet you know there's going to be an opponent there it's a point of entry and it's also a line of sight so i'm already gonna have my crosshairs at the door so for example it's so much better and easier to do this versus you know having your crosshairs down like this and then you see an opponent there and then last second you know you're trying to adjust your shot and by that time it might already be too late because of how fast paced this game is so if we already have our crosshairs aimed up right it's a lot faster as you can see here so let's just walk around the map just really quick all right we're gonna go to this door to our left crosshairs are already on there you know you can run around the map you can walk around the map do this in a private match just make sure that your crosshairs are as centered as possible and they're going to be in areas where you feel like there are going to be opponents
All right, this is much easier, much more efficient than having your crosshairs placed in random parts of your screen. It's just gonna result in a much more positive gunfight. All right, so this next tip is one of the more important tips here. This tip is called snapping. So what snapping basically is, is let's say that this is my target right here. You literally aim down sights. That's snapping right there, all right? Let's say target number two is right here, this telephone booth, you're gonna snap right there. So the main thing when it comes to snapping and you're dealing with multiple opponents at a time is you wanna focus on the bigger threat. Most of you guys who have seen my live gameplays you guys notice that sometimes i say okay i'm gonna go for this guy because you know he is like right in front of me and the guy behind him is not really looking at me or paying attention which means i have a higher chance of winning that gunfight you know if i'm paying attention to the priority which is the guy who is the bigger threat that would be the mailbox right here he's much closer to me this is going to be the benefit of snapping you're gonna snap here right you're gonna aim out and then you're gonna snap here now let's go ahead and take a look at what it would look like if i were to just drag my crosshairs from point a to point b so i'm gonna aim down sight here i'm gonna snap and then i'm gonna drag my crosshair see how slow that was transition is definitely slower and you are going to lose a gunfight to that second guy because you're just way too slow whereas you can just snap here aim out bam easy as that now of course at first it may not feel perfect but that's why you need to practice every single day. So this is gonna help elevate your game and make you a much more well-rounded player. Just dealing with multiple opponents and being able to snap on your target as fast as you possibly can. All right, so just practice, just trying to get your timing right and snapping onto targets. All right, so the last and final tip that I wanna go over is using private match lobbies against bots, and they have to be on recruit just so that we can practice every single thing that I did talk about today. Keeping my crosshairs in the center of the screen, also trying to predict where enemies are gonna be at. I'm looking at my mini map, and I also do have that UAV constantly on. That's why I know where to go and also to predict that gunfight. So we're gonna try different methods here. All right. We just fired our weapon. Let's try a burst. There you go. Let's do it again. As you can see, we did a little bit of snapping action there as well. Let's go get a different angle. Predicted his movement. Controlling that recoil nice and easy, keeping those crosshairs nice and centered. So yeah, if you guys do just practice this every single day, it's going to be so much easier to control your recoil and your aiming is going to improve 100%. That's about it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy, make sure to leave a like on the video. I'd really appreciate it if you guys did learn something new. And make sure to subscribe if you're brand new around here. Join Trepa Nation today and I will see you guys in the next video. Yo, if you guys are always on your computer all day or you like to game for long sessions, definitely check out GamerAdvantage.com for these blue light blocking glasses, quite literally the best blue light glasses that you can ever find on the market. Make sure to check out GamerAdvantage.com and just learn more about it, man. There's so many benefits to keeping your eyes nice and healthy. You won't feel that strain at the end of the day and you'll go to sleep like a baby at the end of the day and that's the best part. You won't feel tired at all. Definitely check out GamerAdvantage.com. Use code TURBO at checkout.